In this episode called The Blackout and the Blizzard, I always really like these episodes because they're called bottle episodes, which basically means that we're bottled in the lab or in some kind of contained area. Lights went out. We end up getting stuck in an elevator for a long time uh, while trying to solve this murder. Dude, I know. We're all friends on this show, and when you get bottle episodes like that where there's no one else and it's just you and, like, your brothers and sisters, it feels like a sleepover. We both thought about it. It? Sleeping together. They're my favorite kind of episodes. It's a very unique episode for Bones, I think. In this particular episode, uh, Brennan and Booth are stuck in an elevator in Booth's building. The city may be on the verge of a deadly viral outbreak. And we're trapped in here? The rest of the cast is is bottled in the lab. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Of course I know what I'm doing. I just need to... Whoa! Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no! Patrick! 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 Oh, my bad. It was really different from, from anything that Bones had done before. No way. They've all grown and become far more a part of our lives, I think. We know them so much better. There's just different worlds going on. Obviously, one at the lab and one in this elevator, but there's also different worlds going on with the pregnancy with Angela and the tests. This one has a little bit more of a, um, um, a little bit of a darker side for Angela and Hodgins, because Angela is obviously pretty far along with her pregnancy. Holy cow. I heard that. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it was um, it was an exclamation of admiration. <clears throat> I wasn't actually... Stop now. Save yourself. And Hodgins gets the news that he is, in fact, a carrier yeah. of the LCA gene. Okay, thanks. He finds out he has it, and he's really uh, uh, distraught. I gotta, I gotta tell Angela. She's gonna hate me. Hodgins, she's not gonna hate you. We're laughing over the bodies, and... You know, Hodgins comes in and gives Angela the news, and um, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty intense episode for those two. Also, what's going on with Booth and Brennan with their relationship? So there's so many different levels going on, and that's what I'm really excited about. Mrs. Ross sent some snacks. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. Should I? I think being trapped in that elevator and being prodded by sweets. What do you think of uh, resuming therapy? Jack? What? Why? No, forget about why. No. Gave us an opportunity to see them deal with their own feelings for each other um, in a way that we haven't in the past. As a couple, me and you would never. No, it wouldn't work. There's something about that containment. There's something about getting two characters that you love being forced to interact with each other, you know? quite literally behind bars. Booth. I can't just sit here. I'm just gonna try and move the chairs again. Booth, All right, you're I'm back. Fine. You happy now? Yeah, it's useless. A lot of things happening at once in, in true Bones fashion. <laughs> just to play in profile when I'm get pushed down. Just I was really up. impressed by, by David's direction, especially of this episode, because it was a challenge, because it's easy to make it boring if you're stuck in one place for so long. But the character interactions and what they were talking about uh, was so engrossing that you don't really care about the fact that, that you're just stuck in this one place. Uh, have her look up Jack's your sweets. David, very enthusiastic and a lot of fun to work with. And he just kind of um, shines when he's directing. Okay, let's get Emily. All right. Just to get Emily over here. All right, great. Okay. It's hard because you have to put yourself in the role, uh, you know, and and work and have all of your stuff going on, your subtext and whatnot, and at the same time you have to kind of compartmentalize that and then have a sense of the director and where you're shooting from and where you're coming from. What I love most about it when David works is that he, and he's an actor, and and he's an actor that works with us all the time, so he gets us, but it's that you can really come to the table with ideas, and he's so willing to uh, uh, play with that. That just is a testament to how, how well he, he works with, with the actors. He's wonderful. He's really great. You come and go, oh, I was thinking this, and he'll go, yeah, and what about this? And then you say, yeah, yeah, oh, and this. Oh, great, great. And before you know it, you're just playing. You're just playing and trying things, and that's the best. The elevator, which we built, uh, which looks amazing, um, it's just natural light coming in from the windows, and uh, but the confined space is, is tricky. How we shot it, you kind of have this angle of these two people, and then as the show goes on, and they're getting closer, then suddenly the camera's getting closer, where eventually you got on the inside of the bars, which I thought was smart. And I just I noticed that when I was watching it, and I thought, wow, go David. <laughs> wow. That feels great. But I really like that elevator because you could see through it and it gave them seemingly enough room to move around, but also to feel trapped. 
I think there were four or five days in the elevator. Yeah, it was, um, we were very glad to be out of the elevator. Since you find yourselves here trapped, you could look at it that way. Because you get a little claustrophobic. It, it's definitely challenging. We go on three. Wait, 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 on three or one, two, three, and then go, which is more common. I, I, I don't know, it's up to you. Well, on three would be quicker. Not anymore. Well, it's tough because you only have a certain amount of days to do it, and you have to build the elevator, and on top of that, you have to, you want to make it look as best as you possibly can. I was amazed at first by the fact that the elevator actually worked. I mean, it was a, it was a, a, an elevator that went up and down, which is what elevators do, but you don't expect that to be on, on the set of something that they built within a week or so. We built a mock-up of the elevator so that we could, you know, work on, okay, if the elevator is seven foot tall, these are the chairs. If it's nine foot tall, then where is the, the trap? Oh. oh, it's open! No! I don't know. It goes up, say, six feet, and that's when it gets blocked off so that you can see for the director and the lighting and the producers involved, too, the angles that would be needed. There were challenges with the way the doors would open and close for the actors just to get in. That was challenging. How to secure the bottom of the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! And you just, you all work together to figure that out. You completely believed it in a, an apartment building in DC. It just looked authentic to me, for even though it was on a soundstage here at Fox. It was a little bit of a challenge, but again, it's such an incredible group we hear on the show. The painters, the carpenters, the special effects gentlemen that did the steel work that had done a lot for us this season. I wish we could just keep it for more shows, but... <laughs> Michael is awesome. He has done... I mean, everything always feels real. I mean, it feels legitimate in a, in a really flushed out, complete way. I mean, I never feel like there's like a wink-wink on it. It feels like that's actually the elevator. It doesn't feel like it was built, you know, a few days prior. I'm very, very happy with it, so... Regarding the Blizzard episode, I have to applaud David. I think he's a fantastic director. He really, when, when, when you consider that he pretty much had one location to deal with, and it was a, a pretty claustrophobic space, um, he really got great performances, and his shot choices are wonderful. He's a, a very visual director. Hands down in six years, he's absolutely one of my, my favorite directors, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Actually, he's probably one of my favorite directors, even outside of the six years, but don't tell him I said that. He's a very good actor's director, and everything in that scene, it just looks great. David did a great job.